a very good morning to everyone we are discussing the rotary drilling bits and in the last lecture we talked about the bits we said that there are three types of bits available in the market that we use during the drilling operation as you can see here one of them is the roller cone bit the other one is the diamond bit and third one is the ordinary drag bit okay these diamond bit are also the type of drag bit but because since they have diamond that's why they are putting them in separate way because they are we are using the special material which is the polycrystalline diamond material okay now each these three of them has their own types of bit for example different diameters this diamond bit could be of different diameter this could be different diameter then you can see the dynamics of this nozzles and fluid flow inside this bit can be different here the the tooths can be different the material can be different here also the number of the cutters can be different so it all depends on like what kind of bit you are using which what quality and you know every these three has lot of other choices and so on look at here different types here we have available here it has three cutters one two and three this one in the drag bit one here you can see we have different kind of drag bits and so on then we have the other one which is the the here it is the other one it has three cones and then the cone has an angle and it has the nozzles here again this kind of bit also has two different kind you can see here this one is the normal one and this one is the tungsten carbide one these teeth are different than this one so again not only this there are many other choices available if you look at the internet and so on and after these bits are used from the complete tooth they become like this one so if i show you these teeth this teeth is break or wear or tear and reduce to the small particle size and so on different kinds of teeth size are available you can see here there are, there are a lot of variety depends which one you are going to use and up to the company you are using and so on now we talked about the standard quality classification now we are talking about the rock failure mechanism today's lecture is about the rock failure how the mechanism how it fails the rock and how it cuts the rock and how the cuttings are lifted well the first step there are steps okay the first step is the wedging wedging you can say is a forcing action a twisting or forcing action which you know when the bit goes down it forces inside its teeth or cutters into inside the rock okay when it because why it can force the for example if you have hold here now as you know that this all drill string is composed of drill collars and drill pipes drill collars the purpose of drill collar is to provide the weight so there is a lot of weight this drill string is providing towards the downward and as you would all we also discuss the compression so there is a compression applied using the bottom hole assembly compression because of this compression there is a force generated here there is a force generated here and it is due to the weight on bed it is due to the compression the, the teeth or cutters whatever they are they fix themselves inside the it's like you know a biting uh, apple you can say when you bite an apple you see your teeth first stick to the apple and make apply the force on the apple so the teeth goes inside the, the apple the same way these teeth go inside the rock and the force is applied through the compression of the drill string assembly so this is the first action that is happening when we talk about the the rock failure mechanism okay here it is the tooth this is the tooth we are talking about and this tooth just go inside by force inside the rock and create a force on it then after this force is created the teeth is inside the second action it is it will uh, do the 
Yeah, this is for example, this is the tooth. Through the wedging action, this tooth is went inside the rock. You see. The next, this is the wedge. Yeah, action. It went inside the rock. And in the next step, as you know, the cones are moving. When the cones are moving, this tooth will drag the cuttings towards the outside of it. So if you look at the third part, this tooth will drag this rock towards the side of the wall. Here you can see it. It will drag towards the side of the wall. So and here, if we can see here, it will go inside and drag and clean up the side. And as you know, the cones are moving, the rotary bit is moving, so the action is continuous and faster. So that's the main uh, way of cutting the, the, the rock. So let's get back what we are talking about. The first thing it will do is the wedging action. The wedging is by forcing the teeth inside the rock using the weight on bit and the compression of it. And here is the one, the diagram that it has. So we have to apply the force and so on. Then the, the similar thing, there is a, a person, Morer, he applied, he created a device called something like this one. This device can, we can have a high pressure, uh, it's a high pressure device and we can put the pit tooth here inside and see that uh, at under high pressure, uh, borehole pressure or rock pore pressure or rock confinement pressure, how the tooth will cutting will behave. Here you see multi. So this is a device they have made in order to simulate the borehole condition. So apparatus used for study of bit tooth penetration under simulated borehole condition. The purpose is to check if the bit is working fine, will find work, will work fine in the borehole conditions or not. This is the equipment they have made. So what is the rock fail, failure mechanism? There are six steps for rock fail, failure mechanism. This number one, the tooth goes inside the rock. As you can see here, a load is applied to the bit tooth. Load, you can see compression through the bottom wall uh, assembly and so on. And it is applied up to the point where, where some of the rock is crushed inside. And finally, powdered rock is formed. So the tooth is inserted, wedged, and some of the part is broken and it is a powder is formed in the third step. Then it will keep increasing the fracture and then it will be dragged toward the side of it, on the sides and continuously they are rotating. And if you look at the post fracture, it goes like this in the second one. Then it will come out and you know, it will proceed again. The next step is proceed, proceed again because we have to continue the drilling. So once the powder coming out, the drill goes down further and the action continues. So now if we summarize this rock action, we can summarize this. like this one. Recorded in the Hughes Christensen Drilling Technology Laboratory. Join us as we take you to the bottom of the hole. The star line of bits continues to be the most reliable. So what these teeth are doing first, they are forcing themselves down inside the formation and then this cone is moving. When this cone is moving, the teeth which is inside the rock is dragging it on the side. That's how it Slim hole tricones on the market. This small diameter bit uses a six point stabilization concept to reduce vibration. A also, if you see that both cones, they are working together, they are intermingled. Bearing lubricated with synthetic grease resists heat induced breakdown and increases bearing load capacity. The Hydroboss HX05C is part of a hydraulically enhanced line of bits that excel in all balling environments. Its new Xtreme hydraulic system simultaneously cleans the cones and the whole bottom while providing excellent cuttings. Sometimes what happens that the rock 
they are cutting here is gummy it is like a gum kind of sticky like or mud so it's very sticky and gummy so what happens this mud sometimes they are stick to these between these two at this point at this point so when the mud is stuck here then the tooth may not function properly you see here now the bit is the tooth is very clean because this is a very modern bit which has option to clean this cones also but in the previous one sometimes the cuttings can stick between these tooths so in that case the ability of the tooths to do the wedging and crashing and dragging effect is reduced so in this one they are showing the drilling fluid also cleans up this one and these cuttings then lifting evacuation This hard rock bit is designed for hard and abrasive formations. Its cutting edge technology has made lost and broken compacts almost a thing of the past. To promote a full gauge hole, hard rock bits utilize a double gauge row configuration, placing up to 50% more carbide on gauge. This Ultramax bit utilizes a patented single energizer metal sealing system. This robust bearing package teamed with state of the art lubrication and stabilization systems make Ultramax bits ideal for demanding high temperature and high speed rotary and motor applications. This Ultramax bit represents the ultimate in steel tooth bit design. These all bits are different. Their teeth are different. The MX1's tooth and gauge area are protected by Endura 2 hard facing. This durable hard metal material is applied to the... Now, you should observe from here. When this cone is coming, the teeth is going down. The front and trailing edges of each, so for example, this teeth each tooth and spear point area. Now, this teeth is inside. Then to retard tooth wear and provide extra protection from fluid erosion. Now, that one was the roller cone. This polycrystalline diamond compact bit, or PVC bit, drills by shearing the formation rather than by crushing rock like a roller cone bit. The shearing action... So in this case, the tooth are not, it has, does not have a wedging action. It's like an erosion action. Erosion means it is just, you know, you know... ...makes it possible for PVC bits to maintain high penetration rates with less weight on bit. You can see there is a... There's a friction here between both these one and there's a dragging only. So this one is just using the dragging. The BD-535 features black ice polished cutters designed for specific applications. This small diameter Genesis bit represents a new era in PDC bit design and technology. These bits are setting new levels of performance and consistency. Thanks to a new design process and advances in cutter technology, bit stabilization and hydraulics. Its name is the Black Eye Diamond. This Genesis HCM bit was specifically designed for long and medium radius steerable applications. Like other Genesis bits designed for steerable motor operations, the HCM 408 incorporates new concepts to enhance tool face control. A unique cutter configuration lowers the bit's torque response to additional weight, thereby enhancing its directional capabilities. That 
was the the action of the bit inside the bottom hole. This is about the roller cone bit. This one. This is these peaks. This goes down. Then it is dragged to the surface. Okay. Now the question is, what is the criteria of selecting the best bit? Well, first of all, for example, now first you need to look at it like what kind of uh, well you are drilling. Either you are drilling the wildcat well or you are drilling the production well. As you know, the wildcat well is the first well drilled in the reservoir. So we don't have the data. We don't know what's going on. So we look at the nearby wells, other companies and other previous wells, what they have done in the nearby reservoirs. So we just follow the same pattern. Or you can say we do the trial and error at this point. But once we drill the production well, means it is the second or third well we are drilling. So in that case, we have all the data and we know what bit is will be good, what bit will be bad, because we go through all the formation. We know what kind of rock we are expecting downhole. So we just, we know, and based on that, we decide. But for the first well is a bit trickier and we have to decide based on the nearby areas what they are doing there. How to select the bit? There's a formula here, criteria for selecting the best bit, which is the, uh, first of all, let me open one example and I show you one example on that. In this rig system calculation, if we go to the last example, we have an example like this one. Let's look at and read what it says. It says a recommended drill program is being prepared for the new well uh, using bit performance records from the nearby wells. Okay, so now we are planning to drill the well and we are, we are looking at the performance of the nearby wells because we don't have the data for our reservoir for now. Drilling performance records uh, for the three bits are shown for the thick limestone formation for 9,000 feet. So now we have the performance of the nearby wells. They bought three bits. You can see here, there's a bit cost. Uh, there's a bit cost given here, $800. Bit A cost $800. Bit B cost $4,900. And bit C cost $4,500. Now we have three bits. We have to select which one is the best, okay? Now we have the record of the nearby wells. We, they, have, they have rotating time, for example, how many hours this bit was updated. As you see that $800 rotated for the least, less time, 14.8 hours. And the second bit was used for 57.7 hours. And the third bit was used 95.8 hours. And the connection time, how much time it took to connect it and you know, send it back is 0 0.5 hours here. It's given here for the first 0 0.1, second 0 0.4 and third one is 0 0.5 hours means 30 minutes and what is the penetration rate feet per hour how many uh, feet it can drill in one hour so drill bit a can drill 13 feet to 14 feet per hour b can drill 12.6 uh, to uh, 13 feet per hour and the third one c is 10.2 now we have this data from the nearby wells they have all this data and we need to select which one is good for us. The first one is, as you know, this B is the most expensive one. C is moderate, is not that moderate, but A is the cheapest one. So which one we should select? We should not, as you know, that the connection time, the tripping time, you know, it all is a cost because the, as you see, the trip time is seven hours in this one. 
my mouse is not working. Now you see here the trip time is seven hours here. And uh, the operating cost of the rig is $400 per hour. Okay, so as you know, the, just to remove this bit is seven hours time. So, and connection time is one minute per connection. Like you have so many connections, you are probably drilling 9,000 feet. So it is a lot. Now we have to consider three bits, which one we should use and why. Now, this is the formula here, as given in the previous one. Let's first look at it, uh, what is going on here. First, let's look at what is the TF. TF here is the drilling cost unit per depth. Cost per feet, you can say, cost per feet. Now, this CV represents the bit cost. For example, here, bit cost is 800, 4,900, or 4,500. Then CR is the fixed operating cost of the rig. Now this is the fixed operating cost, how much cost of the rig is per hour or per day. So this is the cost per feet. Then these T represent different times. For example, number this one is the tripping time, how much time it takes to take out the, all the bit come out and then put it back again. And uh, TC is the non-rotating time during the bit because you see there, are, there will be some time that bit will not be rotated till it goes down, reach to the bottom and so on. And TB is the total rotating time bit can rotate and rotate it in the nearby well. They, they, in the nearby well where it was used this bit, they have used this bit and uh, they have total number of, of hours they use this bit and after it got malfunction or, uh, or out of order at this point. So we have all this point and this time required to drill to a given depth, delta T can be expressed some of the total rotating time some of the total rotating time during the bit run. So this is the time required to total rotating there. So this is some of all the times, all the times as you can see here. So now let's look ahead and solve this example. First of all, let's look at it. What is this CV here? For the, now we have to do here three calculations. As you can see, we have three calculations here. One, two, and three. Here, the bit cost is $800. In the second option, we have bit cost $4,900. In the third option, we have the bit cost $4,500 for bit A, B, and C. Now let's look at the, the this value, which is the CR, rotating fixed operating cost. As you see, the fixed operating cost per hour is $400. So we put the $400 here, $400 here, $400 here. Then this bit rotating time is given from the nearby wells how much time bit can rotate? Here it is given 14.8, 57.7, 95.8. Same thing we have given 14.8, 57.7, 95.8. Then the second point is the total uh, non-rotating time, you see. Non-rotating time from the nearby well also we know, uh, connection time you can say 0 0.1 hours, 0 0.4 hours or 0 0.5. 0 0.5 hours means 30 minutes. This is less than 30 minutes and this is probably 10 minutes. So we put all this here, 0 0.1, 0 0.4, all values are in hours, 0 0.5. And the trip time to remove this one and put it back is seven hours. Seven hours you have to you take out all the, the drill pipes and then you know change the bit and put it back. So trip time is seven hours, here is mentioned. Now, this 13.8, 13.8 is the penetration rate. How many feet per hour it can drill? Okay, how many penetration, how many feet per hour it can drill? And is multiplied by the rotating time. So this is per feet it can drill and this is the total time it can rotate. So this will be the total time a bit can operate. So 13.8 and multiplied by 14.8. Here it is, 13.8 multiplied by 14.8. On the other side, 12.6 multiplied by 57.7. So 12.6 multiplied by 50 cents. So we are trying to know the total time it has used. So we are just multiplying the mean penetration rate along with the, its rotating time. So that's the total uh, time required to give, fill the total depth and so on. So we have these three one. 
calculation, all the values are already given. Now the cost we obtain per feet here is $46.81, $42.45 and $46.9. Now from these things, we can see that the initial cost of this bit 4,900 is more, but the operating cost, the overall cost of using this one is actually the less 42 hours. So lowest drilling cost was obtained using the bit fee. So it, buying the bit is not only the cost we need to consider. We need to consider how many hours or how many, how much will be the performance of this bit. So based on these three bits, we find out that 14.56 feet uh, per feet, 14.42.56 dollars per feet is the cost of bit B, and it is the recommended one we can use it. So most of the data is obtained from the nearby wells, and they already have all the information available and so on. Plus, many companies will contact themselves. They will tell you, okay, we use this bit in nearby your well here. Do you have, they have used this well, you should use this one. So life, your life will be easier. It's not like you have to do the rocket science. The drill bit engineer themselves, they will come tell you everything, but you have to be smart because as I say, service companies, people are very, very smart people. And you have to be very careful when you deal with them. They want their business, you want your business and the business has to be properly negotiated and check by everything what is going on. So any question from this example? Okay, so after this example, I go back to my lecture again. Okay, this is the same formula we talked about and uh, there's the example given, you will see this ahead. Okay, now after this criteria of the successful bits, there are two terms the drilling engineer usually, usually talk about, drill ability and abrasiveness. So drill ability, they talk about how easy formation can be drilled. For example, the formation is hard, easy. So if it is hard formation, will this bit has ability to drill it properly or in the, with a good time or not? So this is the drill ability one. It takes about the uh, how easy it can drill the rock or cut the rock. And the other one is abrasiveness. It depends on the rock. How it is for is a measure of how rapidly the teeth of the mild tooth bit will wear when drill formation. So abrasiveness is you know the, the strength of the rock and uh, how much time and it will take for the teeth of the mild tooth bit to wear. How much time this bit can survive? How much time this bit can function properly until it get harab or you know teeth become wear and tear and so on. So abrasiveness is the hardness of the rock and uh, it shows the total time the bit can run and so on. In the normal soft to moderate formation, we use the roller cone bit, roller cutter bits. Okay, and also it depends on if you apply too much weight on bit, your bit will break. If you apply less weight on bit, your bit will uh, wear and tear and it will not function properly. So the drilling companies usually they tell you what kind of weight on bit you can apply on this bit, how much weight it can sustain. Because bit, there's a lot of weight on bit there will be. And if you if it exceeds its limit, critical limit, then the bit can be in danger and it can malfunction and tear and wear can happen and so on. Okay. Then, then this drag bits usually they perform in the hard formation in a better way. And as you saw the, in a video, the function of the drag bits and so on, how they work and so on. Now the bit evaluation, how these bits are evaluated. Like after you, let's say you use 10 hours, bit, you use the bit for 15 hours or 20 hours, how they will, you will grade them, how much they have, they are used, how much they are not used. So there are three things we talk about, the grading, the, the evaluating and grading the bit three section, one of them is the teeth, other one of the bearing and third one of the bit diameter. So in order to understand these three, first let's look at one of the animation related to it, which explains it in a very nice way. What we have here is a tricone oil drill bit and downhole shaft. This is used to create a cylindrical hole in the earth. Now let's look at the construction of the bit. As I said, there are three parts that we look at when we evaluate the bit. Bit teeth, bearing, and the diameter. So 
What we have here is a tricone oil drill bit and downhole shaft. So these are the teeth. We have to see how much they tear and wear or reduce their size. These are the nozzles you see here. And this is the overall diameter. This is you. Yes. Yeah, could you lower the voice a little bit because there is a large difference between your voice and the video. Is it fine? For this build, I started with the roller cones. Yeah, it's good. Reference them. Okay. from the internet. Although it is difficult to tell, each of the three cones has a distinctly unique geometry in order to perfectly. So these are the teeth from outside, and it has a bearing inside here. Mesh without interference as they rotate at high velocity. Next, I designed the legs of the drill bit. This proved to be one of the more difficult aspects of the build. In order to design the threads, I first used the SolidWorks helix slash spiral function followed by a sweep cut. I also included an inner cavity in order to facilitate the transportation of the drilling fluid. This cavity forks out to the three nozzles at the head of the bit. Underneath each cone are 12 ball bearings, a silver sleeve to reduce friction, and a rubber seal in order to keep debris out of the it bearing chamber. Each leg has a grease well that can be accessed by removing the compensator. This grease well feeds grease to the bearing chamber. The downhole shaft contains an internal thread and an inner cavity to transport the drilling fluid. The linear stress analysis concluded that with the maximum stress of 20,000 pounds, the downhole shaft has a sufficient tensile strength and will hold up under maximum load. The overall build consisted of 12 unique parts and took over 50 hours. Many SOLIDWORKS functions were utilized, including a so we have to see how these teeth are wear and tear, how much their size is reduced. Secondly, we have to look at the bearing. The bearing is functioning fine or not? Is it rotating fine or not? Because as you apply the force on it, this bearing will get uh, malfunction very fast. So you have to look at the size quality of the bearing when you evaluate the bit. If bearing is fine or not, cones are rotating fine or not. Same like your cars, the car tires also has bearing. So we keep evaluating they are fine or not and so on. And third one is the total overall diameter and so on. Extrude base, revolve base, extrude cut, swept cut, circular pattern, and linear pattern. Now, as I said, we have to look at the tooth, we have to look at the bearing, and we have to look at the overall gauge, the diameter of it. Let's look at the, this is for the teeth. The new one is like this, then after it is used, after some time it's used, and so on and so on. Now, when we say T4, T4 means half choose. When you say evaluate the bit, it says the condition is T6. T6 means it is six by 10 is used. Only four parts is remaining. So we divide the teeth into the 10 parts. And this is the complete tooth base. And after they use, the teeth becomes like this one. This is the normal situation, but sometimes the teeth get broken also. So when they are broken, then this is another problem. It means the quality of the bit was not good. So T4 means four by eight of the insert bits were broken or lost and so on. This is the, about the teeth and so on. Then second thing about the gauge, as you can see from this picture, how much the distance between the cones has increased. Okay, it is because of the uh, drilling fluid high, contain high concentration of abrasive fluid solid as well as the highest circulation rate. So it is because of the circulation rate, these three cones, they break far and the diameter now is increased. This bit is far up because these three cones has to be together, not that far as you see in this, in this picture. Then we have another issue of the bearing and the diameter. Here you see the inside cones are gone, broken in this case. Now this is happens when uh, excessive loads are applied on the cone. 
cone tips. So when you apply so much load, they break down. So you don't, when you buy the bit, definitely they tell you how much weight on bit you can apply, how much drilling fluid it can sustain, how are the performance stress profile and so on. So these teeth can be, can be reduced. On the other side, the bearings can, you know, can be, cannot function, the diameter can also has a problem. On the other side, there's one more problem. If the drilling, for example, is buckled or is not straight anymore like this one, this bit will get cut So it also depends on the angle, the well hole the diameter is going on. The hole has to be vertical 90 degree, like this one, straight like this one. This is our job as a drill engineer to maintain hole in vertical condition. If the bit or drill string buckles like this one, then the bit can, can have a problem here. So what we need to do when we operate the bits, we have to prevent the shocks, shock loading on teeth, bearing. We should make sure that we do not give them lots of shocks and load and extra excessive load and so on. And in order to reduce those shocks, we, use, we have a small parts, we use them shock subs. And the purpose is to dampen the shock loads. Yes. <coughs> yes. Okay. The other one is we have to prevent it from the accidental bit damage. We don't want it to break it. So be sure that you establish the fluid circulation first. I mean, drilling fluid is properly circulating before you start the, the drilling, rotating the bit. Also be, be sure of the tight spots. I mean, your bit size is bigger. These spots, well, you are trying to drill is tighter then bit can break. So be sure that, you know, bit, there should be no accident accidental damage. As you saw in the previous example, one of the mathematical exam example that we just solved, it, the tripping time was seven hours. So seven hours of is loss means, you know, you lose money for nothing just because the you accidentally break the bit. Now you need to spend 10 hours just to trip out and put new bit and send it back. So this is a cost. Okay. So we have to make sure that the, we prevent all kinds of accidents and so on on the bit side. And the selection of bit weight and rotary speed, like what kind of bit weight you should select and what kind of rotary speed you should select. This information is given already by the bit company. Those who made the bit, they have all the data fact, they have all the tables they give you, okay. And also you can do the cost per feet analysis as you saw in the, the formula I've given here and the example that we, we solved. You can do your cost per foot calculation based on the data provided by the drilling bit company. So every bit will come with its own document as this document will tell you the weight on weight and the speed you can apply on it and so on. So you use that tables along with this formula and find out, okay, we should run at this weight and this weight on weight and so on. Be sure that crooked hole buckling side, you know, hole should be straight, 90 degree vertical and so on. And penetration circulation rates are well established first and so on. Be sure for the kick detection and so on and done. So this was the overall, the drilling bit uh, program. As we discussed that there are three different kinds of bit. We discussed that how the, uh, every bit has its own model number, which represents its diameter, the quality, the material, and the type of the bit and where it can be used. Then we talk about the rock failure mechanism, how it cuts the rock, breaks the rock and so on. We talked about the evaluation, that how we evaluate the teeth, the bearings, and as well as the diameter. We talked about some general problems that we should not exceed the weight on weight. We should not exceed the rate of penetration. And we talked about one formula also uh, that we, that by using that formula, we can have a cost per feet table and we can uh, use it. So for example, here, this kind of tables will be provided where RPM is given, the cost of weight is given. And then you, this is the weight on bit. You apply on it. So these kind of tables will be given to you and then you select the best bit based on the situation you are following. So that's all about it. Do you have any questions from this one? Here, this was the example that we had. It is already provided on the Google Classroom. You can look at this one and so on. So if you don't have this question, we will finish the lecture and uh, we will continue on Sunday with more information. So any question? 
Okay. Then if you have any question, you can also email me and we can also discuss in the next lecture whenever we meet and so on. So, uh, yes. Doctor, yes. can I ask a question about the project one? Okay. Uh, I want to ask you uh, how many pages uh, should you write uh, and uh, should you write it down as a, uh, a report? Maybe uh, we have an introduction and conclusion and everything. One page is enough. You, should, you need to write at least 10, 15 roles and responsibilities. That is more than enough. Yes. Thank For you. For example, sir. if you write one role or responsibility, this responsibility is a lot. For example, I ask you, okay, your job is to look at all the rigs. For example, near miss incidents. You have to record for as a health and safety engineer, you have to monitor all the employees, how they are working, whether we are uh, putting the proper, the PPEs or not. PPEs means uh, protection equipments. Okay, personal protective equipments. Are they wearing it or not? So one of the job of the health and safety engineers is to just to make sure that they are following the safety procedures of the, of the bit whether they are wearing the lace-free shoes or not, whether they are wearing the, the hats or not, or the glasses or not, and so on. This is one of the roles and response. Other could be whether you check all the, the screws and you know the greasing is, has done well or not. So these kind of things, roles and responsibility means it's one line, but when it applies in action, it actually is a lot, a lot of work, okay? So yes. if you write 15 roles and responsibilities or 10, 15 even is a lot, but if you write 10 to 15 roles and responsibilities of both is more than enough. It should be one yes, or two yes. sentences each one. Thank you. Okay, but Sorry. the question, yeah, but the question on the other side is, you need to understand what does it mean? For example, uh, what is the role and responsibility? For example, you have to handle the brakes. Okay, when it is written, you have to handle the brakes, what does it mean? So you need to understand the background of that sentence also. Okay, for example, now yeah. requirement of the, let's say junior drill engineer, yes. they want you to do the IWCF. So you should know what is IWCF. Okay. It is the aim of the project. Yeah, it's a well-controlled safety program, but you need to know the background. The sentence you write, you know, you should know, and for that you can read a lot, as much as possible. Sir, sorry. Yeah. I have already done mine. It's about five pages, is it fine? It's fine, it's fine. That's fine. As long as you understand, it is very good. Okay. Yeah, and it's in uh, two different documents. It's not in the same. It's fine. It's fine. I will check it and I will update you with that. On the Thank you, sir. I, yeah, I will check them. So my point is that you understand what you are doing. For example, if you are finding health and safety or junior drilling engineer responsibility, you should understand the background of them. Each sentence has a background. Okay. For example, if you just take one word here, trip time, let's say here, it's written here on this slide, trip time. Now on this trip time, you can write five pages, 10 pages, 20 pages, maybe a chapter, or just on this word trip time. Let's say you are looking at the bit, okay, this word bit. It, this is just one word here, bit. But you see, we have one chapter, there are books, there are thousands of companies working on this bit. So the word actually has a lot of background, this bit, or drilling bit, or let's say, we talk about here drilling performance. Now, when we talk about drilling performance, it's written just drilling performance. But when you look at its background, you can find hundreds of books talking about the drilling performance. So what is written here, it has a huge background. And what I want you, whatever you write, you should know its background. Okay, you, you may not write it, it's fine for me, but you should know what you are doing. Do not like just copy paste and so on. Try to understand what it says. Because if you don't understand, then this assignment will be useless for you. Okay. Okay. So any other question? In the end, you know, we are here for learning more and grading less. We are here to, you know, make our concepts clear. We are here to, to build you a better engineer, a better person who can perform in a better way, who understands the things. This is our main objective. Grading is the secondary objective. Okay, see you guys then in the next class. And if you have any question, you can still email me. Thank you. Okay. Take care.
Mayra.